Hey everybody, Rhino here, the world's strongest pro bodybuilder and founder of The Vertical Diet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I get uh, people that reach out to me from all over the world and they have certain symptoms and these are common symptoms that they get. Things like brain fog, increased blood pressure, water retention, heart palpitations, high blood sugars, constipation, sugar cravings, muscle weakness such as heavy legs, arthritis, bloating, muscle cramps and spasms, and fatigue. Now, of course, it's never any one thing, but all of these things have something in common that you might be able to change with your lifestyle and your diet. And that something is potassium. Getting 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day is hard to do. The NSCA's book, The Essentials of Strength and Conditioning, suggests that fewer than 2% of the people get an adequate amount of potassium daily. So I specifically focus on potassium in the vertical diet. And I use these foods, and you have to be deliberate about it. You have to cobble together a number of different high potassium sources in order to get your 4,700 milligrams a day. In the vertical diet, I suggest a daily potato, some fruit, cooked spinach, yogurt, salmon, and of course, uh, there's 100 milligrams of potassium in every ounce of uh, red meat. So that can get you all together your 4,700 milligrams a day of potassium. Most people aren't getting those. There's additional sources you can get from avocado. Squash has 900 milligrams. Coconut water, you can use that in your para-workout drink if you'd like. Uh, the dried apricots and bananas, although high calorie, they also provide significant amount of potassium. Dried tomatoes. And notice a banana, although it does provide significant potassium, it's only half of that of a potato. So these are the sources that I, you typically would see in the vertical diet. Another reason being is that potatoes and oranges are high satiety foods and uh, the spinach and the carrots that I recommend are low gas foods. And so those are also good for your digestion. So if you're suffering from any of these symptoms, such as brain fog, high blood pressure, potassium is very important for regulating uh, with sodium the water balance in the body. So you can uh, definitely do a lot to prevent water retention if you get edema and you get swollen ankles and things like that. Getting adequate potassium is an excellent cure for that. Heart palpitations, potassium is part of the nerve signaling, and so if you're having trouble with your heart palpitations, getting adequate potassium could solve that problem. Increased blood sugars, now that's important because potassium binds with glucose to form glycogen, so it helps level out uh, glucose levels in the bloodstream. Constipation, this one here is very common. People reach out with concerns about constipation. If they get adequate potassium and water, this problem goes away. I don't throw a lot of fiber at constipation problems. It tends to actually aggravate the problem. Potassium seems to solve it. Sugar cravings, again, I mentioned the potassium binds to glucose to form glycogen. So you find that sugar cravings goes down, which is very important in complying with the diet because if people get hungry, uh, they're gonna deviate from the diet. Muscle weakness and heavy legs, potassium and sodium is all part of the nerve signaling and so this can also be remedied with potassium. Uh, arthritis, you find the potassium really helps with the joints as well. Bloating, muscle cramps and spasms and fatigue, all of those things are dramatically helped by getting adequate potassium. So incorporate that into your diet and I'm sure you'll get resolution or some resolution for most of these symptoms. And that's all in the vertical diet uh, along with all the research. Uh, I've got over 200 peer reviewed published uh, articles and uh, videos uh, that, are, that are excellent resources if you want to take a deeper dive and that's at stanefforting.com.